Good morning and welcome to another edition of Daybreak Extra. It is a Saturday, another Saturday, and today is a beautiful day. Like my, you know, uh, colleague would say, it's a humid day. It's raining in some parts, but not in some parts. But, you know, all the same, the weather is cozy, if I may say so myself. I'm Dasha and Hussein Usman, and we're live at the Federal Capital Territory. You're welcome to Trust TV. I have my co-anchor, a different person altogether today, uh, but, you know, you actually know him. You've seen him, you know, on the show uh, once or twice. <laughs> Good morning and Good welcome. Morning. Please introduce uh, yourself. Lovely morning it is here in the mm. Federal Capital Territory. Yes, it is a humid day uh, mm -hmm. because it's been raining yeah. and it's been a really cold one in the FCT. Well, my name is Sagir Ibrahim. Welcome to Daybreak Extra. And we promise that today's show is going to be packed. At least today yes, I'm on the driver's seat. Uh, no, you're not. I'm on. The okay, okay, seat. okay. Rather than you're still a guest on the driver's seat. Okay? I want to call you sure call me a guest driver. Guest. driver. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, so I'm actually not in the not in the mood to argue with Sagir today mm. or Sagir today. So, uh, but today on the program we'll be looking uh, at a lot of interesting topics. You know, we have a musician in the house, and we also have you know uh, a film producer joining us later on the show. After which we'll bring to you you know a lot of entertainment, and we also have someone different. And this is you know majorly because because, uh, you know, Rosemary is actually uh, on leave, so she'll be joining us when she, you know, returns. But for now, let's take a quick breather, and when we return, it'll be time for, you know, the newspaper review. Do stick around. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic, and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency.
back and thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're watching Daybreak Extra on Trust TV. And it's now time for the newspaper review. Right about now, we have uh, Daily Trust Saturday uh, as our first or leading newspaper. And I will take a look at the front pages of uh, these dailies we'll be bringing your way today. The lead story on Daily Trust Saturday talks about 62 priests kidnapped, four killed in two years. Catholic clergy's top list, 540 million naira demanded in ransom. And then if you take a look at, you know, this lead story, you find an infograph of a breakdown of killing and kidnapping of priests from 2021 to 2022. You know, the states, the ransom demands, you know, total number of, uh, you know, kidnaps as well. Uh, if you check the bottom of that particular story, you'd find a story that says, Nigerians express concern as 5,000 bakers down tools, and details of that on page 7. Uh, on the news as well, we have INEC drops Abacha's son, names Wali PDP Guba candidate in Kano. We also have 109 billion Naira scam, court remands ex-AGF, others include J. Kuskura, patronage of dangerous herb on the rise, and this is on page 6. We also have uh, an encounter with a 13-year-old who says he wants to become a civil engineer, uh, you know, and he built a miniature Brno flyover. Mm, so adorable. And then if you check the top of the page there, we have on entertainment, entertainers, entertainers who have ventured into politics. And we'll be discussing, you know, a lot about that on the entertainment uh, segment as well. Court awards 3 million naira against ex Bielsa Permsec DSS. Details on page 7. These are some of the stories, uh, some of the stories on Daily Trust newspaper. All right, uh, we'll go to the Punch newspaper. And on the banner headline there, we see face off with Ared Beshola cost Oyetola's re election minister's faction. We are assessing outcome of poll. Oyetola to talk after consultation. And that's according to an aide. Buhari Atiku Saraki governors hail Adeleke, governor elect promises to perform. Oshun poll indicates Ige's voice resounds from the grave, says Shoyinka. Uh, we see a picture of the day there where we see PDP supporters celebrating the victory of the governorship candidate Senator Adimola Adeleke um, at Ede and Oshubu, you know, in Oshun State. Um, underneath the picture, we see monkeypox cases hit 101, highest in five years. Uh, that story could be found in page 15. Mikhail beats Gazama, tidy to emerge NBA president, and the story could be found on page 14. Buari Sonwudu, APC Mon Kemi Nelson, page 14 as well. I'm on the footer, we can see name Northerner campaign DG, Babachi panel tells Tunubu. Lagos Bisman accuses police of extortion, petitions Inspector General. Lagos Ibadan, Julius Berger repairs Long Bridge after punch. Uh, report and on the header of the punch newspaper we see marketers finally um, hike petrol price to 170 naira to 190 naira per liter page 21 dash and if that was the case i mean why there do we still have few, cases exactly of, of you know queues in fuel stations you know, here i actually tried, tried, tried to actually get fuel yesterday yeah. but you know uh, most of the fueling stations were locked and uh, those that actually had feel very few, by the way, you know, there's the really, really long queues. So yeah, this begs the question: What is really the problem? Because you know, initially they were saying they had a lot of, uh, you know, the government was owing them quite a lot of money. Exactly. You know, and, and then and now the pump price, you know, they increase the pump, the pump price, price unofficially, mm -hmm. and it's now official. And then you, uh, we're actually hearing that you know uh, uh, the government intends to spend uh, a huge amount of Six money on subsidy as well. You know, yeah, and exactly. So, so what increase. is happening? And you know, uh, yeah, Melikari actually came out to say that you know there will be fuel uh, supply like from last week, mm -hmm. and we're not seeing it. Yes, the first few days we actually saw you know uh, lots of you of know course. availability of, of petrol, you know, but now disappeared. What is actually happening? What is well, happening? Um, we are hoping that with the new um, you know petroleum industry act in place and 
you know, the new NNPC Limited, because now it's a publicly traded yeah, company, yeah, exactly. would see some of these issues disappear. Mm, All right, to conclude with the Punch newspaper, Tinubu Shatima, APC picked best winning combinations. Um, that's by the chairman of the party, Abdullah Adamu. ASU, NLC plans nation, national protest, police demand notification. That story could be found on page five. Another unfortunate, you know, situation there. We've had students from tertiary institutions mm. at home for going to five months now. It went to six months. Six it's been months five months now. already. Yeah. Six months. And finally, on the Punch newspaper, Senate orders Nimasa DG's arrest over nine billion dollars loss. Mm, interesting. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the Nation newspaper, and uh, we have the lead story that says fresh trouble for Tambuel. Bala others as court access Umahi. Details on page four. And uh, just below that story, we have PDP has no Guber candidate in Delta. INEC lists Wali, Cole, Mba, others. And we have writers that say Omit Abacha in Kano, Labour Party's Edeoga in Enugu, Gauna remains Kano APC flag bearer. Okay, uh, we also have Atiko on Wike Okoa. I chose running mate I can work with. And we have uh, writers that also talk about him denying PDP panel voted in favor of Rivers governor. Deadlock in reconciliation talks with WK's camp. Ex-VP says OB, Labour Party lacks structures. And uh, we also have ex-AGF received 100... Ex-AGF received 15 billion Naira bribe to facilitate payments to states. And uh, at the top of the page, we have El Rufai not against Tinubu Shatima tickets, says Ubasani. And we have writers that say APC won't exclude any religion, ethnic group, says Lukman. Wase, those against same faith ticket want cheap access to power. More stories coming in from The Nation Saturday. UK doctor charged for connivance in Ikwere Madu case. And uh, finally, untold story of a woman who set Cairo-based lover ablaze and committed suicide. These are some of the stories on uh, the front page of The Nation newspaper. We move to the Saturday Independent. Uh, starting from the very top, we see Atiku, PDP berate APC, Tunubu over alleged fake bishop, Muslim Muslim ticket others. Uh, beside that story, we see man 31 to die by hanging for killing girlfriend in a choir bomb. That story could be found in page three. Quite unfortunate one there. Um, alleged 109 billion naira fraud. Court remands former Accountant General Ahmed Idris, others in Kujé. Uh, below the masthead, we see a huge banner which states COVID-19 donors demand Report on fund administration as cases rise. Uh, I spent 300,000 Naira on tests each trip I make. And that's according to a frequent traveler. Uh, serial swabs for tourists no longer mandatory in some countries like UK. That's according to experts. Uh, below that, we see no headway as Sanu Nasu strike hits 177 days. And on entertainment, Glamour Girls actress Yukiria Anunobi defends premarital sex. You could find that story on page 15 of Saturday Independent. Um, also to the extreme right, you see I'm not a drama queen as Big Brother Ninja season seven starts today. That's true, Dashan. Big Brother Ninja season seven starts today. I guess uh, this is going to really show if the youth, as they say, are interested mm -hmm. in activities of no, politics. I actually feel this, this year the mm. youths are more interested in politics than Big Brother Niger because is there really a buzz compared to, you know, last year and the years before? Is okay, there for, really that buzz on for, social for, media? For buzz, I, I don't think there has been. Because exactly. It hasn't been you know, I actually I didn't know. Exactly. I had I no idea. Morning. I'm just seeing it. And I'm just this morning, I was like, wow, okay. So, so you know, no buzz on I think we've media. suffered enough. So mm. maybe BB BB Niger has gone down the drain. And you know, are we seeing a beginning of uh, the beginning of you know the show losing its value? Well, I I don't know. I can't say for sure. But what I can say is, I just hope that it is enough for the youth to be tired. But you and should actually not get know distracted. exactly. You should actually know why. Because okay, how why? much is a dollar today? As at yesterday, it was 660 naira. 658. 
658, yes. give or take. So rounded up yeah. to 660. As at Monday, it was so, 650. So, so where do you want people to actually get enough money to be voting? You know, these well, people. <laughs> I think um, the key takeaway you from know, this is get your PVC no, honestly, because it is important it for is you to more important for you right to get leaders. your PVC and mm. register. You know that. You know, I'm not. I'm not. Let's. Let's. So, let's, who would let's you rather vote that. for? Would you vote uh, exactly, for the next for, uh, president or the uh, next uh, set the next, of leaders, or you're going to vote for the next, next housemate? Well, exactly. we leave that decision to you <laughs> to to decide. Uh, finally, on <laughs> Saturday, Independence, we see Nollywood divas storm politics as Caroline Danjuma joins Funke Akin. Delhi, Tonto DK in deputy gubernatorial race. That story could be found on page 11. All right, let's move on to this day newspaper. At the top of the page, Buhari vouches for Shatima, says he'll live up to expectations. Uh, we have a writer that says, uh, Tinubu Badabi Amila, five Southwest governors absent as APC leaders meet with president. Uh, airline operators alert on fresh flight disruptions, site aviation fuel scarcity. Uh, you also have more stories just below the uh, banner there. Benin Coalition opposes housing returned artifacts in Abasekis Museum. And uh, it says, accuses governor of always disrespecting, undermining Oba of Benin, insists on Benin Royal Museum. We also have uh, Atiku, that's the lead story there. Atiku, like Abraham Lincoln, the driving force behind my persistence is the desire to serve my country. We also have writers under that story that says, we came not rejected, I only picked someone I can work with. Says Tinubu wanted to be his running mate in 2017, but vetoed him because he abhors Muslim Muslim. And we also have... Uh, like uh, Illumelu, Biden seeks improved U.S. Africa relationship. And what, what is it just like, like <laughs> on this like, day newspaper? I actually have no idea. Like, like Abraham so Lincoln, many, like, and like, like Abraham Lincoln, like Illumelu, like ah, it's well. <laughs> All right, we'll talk more about that. You know, when we come back, more. Uh, these are some of the stories on this day newspaper. Asu anarchy looms as unions dare Buhari. Mm, just ahead, the top mast of uh, the Blueprint newspaper weekend. Uh, Mike Ahamba, Hawa Baba Ahmed, where are they now? Nine burns to death in Ondo auto crash. New sprints, relief as FG malls nationwide, wood parks. Uh, Nigeria safe, not a war zone. That's according to the federal government. For the banner headline, we see 2023 elections will affirm INEC's institutional maturity. Uh, that's according to the president. Anambra Ekiti, or shown proof of my commitment to credible polls. No plans to exclude Christians from Tinubu Shetima projects. That's according to the APC. Northwest moves to reconcile members. Uh, that could be found on page four. And by the right, we see alleged 109.5 billion naira fraud. Court remands suspended AGF others. That story could be found on page six on Blueprint Weekend. And that's it for the Blueprint newspaper. All right, let's take a look at first news um, at the top of uh, the page. 2023 polls. Panelists raised doubt over INEX credibility. Running mate, I didn't reject Wike. I only chose who can deliver, say the Tiku. Tinubu and I disagreed in 2007 over Muslim Muslim ticket, says Atiku. Says he wanted to be my running mate, but I refused. So is he actually saying that Tinubu was willing to leave the APC for the PDP? Oh, well, okay, then he was. Was he in the APC then? I think, was, was it what year? 2007. Two, 2007, I think that was when um, they came together, formed an alliance to form the Action Congress Okay, of Nigeria. okay, oh, oh. Yes, so I think that's what he was talking about. Okay. And I, Tinubu also said that was what hurt, you know, um, the the tickets because they couldn't, you know, Atiku couldn't emerge with Tunubu being the running mate okay. because of the same uh, Muslim, faith. Muslim, mm -hmm. same faith saga. So it but, means um, he's always had the um, Abiola... Kingibe yeah, vibe. vibe. right mm. from time. Oh. Mm. All right, so moving on, Oshun election. Tinubu, how Tinubu failed to truncate a delicate victory, uh, says PDP urges APC flag bearer to withdraw from 2023 presidential race. We also have the lead story that says 2023 elections with Conquaso will be rerun likely. Uh, U.S. Institutes uh, predicts 
and uh, says their candidacies will make next year's polls complex. All right. Backlash trails Atiku's northern social media users claim Governor Omai, he suffers another loss as courts reject his senatorial candidacy. Invasion. Court orders DSS others to pay Namdi Kanu's lawyer 107 million naira. Alleged 109.4 billion naira fraud. Court remains suspended accountants general in prison. Alleged rape. Nollywood actor Armstrong's trial goes to high court. MTN reverses self, says we didn't pay 757.7 .7 billion naira tax to FIRS. We also have more stories. Uh, our defeat's temporary setback. Test from God, says Oyetola. Bishops, you have lost moral standing to seek election. Withdraw, PDP tells Tinubu. Uh, 2023, I don't see any miracle that will help Peter Obi win says Atiku. And these are some of the stories on the first news newspaper. Finally, on the Karako report, uh, why I picked Okoa as running mate over Wiki. That's according to Atiku. Peter Obi Kwankwaso may force 2023 presidential race into rerun, report says. Murik confirms bishops as APC unveiling as authentic. Also strike. DSS report cannot stop our protest, NLC says. Woman alleged of burning husband to death commits suicide. Fake bishops, PDP asked Tinubu to withdraw from presidential race. And finally, 2023, Peter Obi can only win on Twitter. And that's according to an actress. That's interesting. Okay, so what's all these, um, you know, talk, especially from Atiku on, you know, Peter B, you know, it's like he's trying to lash out or bash, uh, you know, his fellow uh, candidates. So I think it's, this mm. is, um, you know, reference to the interview he had on um, yesterday, okay. yesterday morning, mm -hmm. yes, um, on one of the national TV stations. Mm. And he said quite a lot. Hmm. You know, as we, he he mentioned names, Peter Obi, <laughs> not just Peter Obi, you know, he Chinubu, did, of course. even Chore was not left ah. out of the bashing, <laughs> you know, interestingly. So I'm not surprised that it's making headlines hmm. now. And remember, he said, like, Abraham Lincoln, hmm. who contested, like, five or six times, he's doing what he's doing for the sake of the country so hey okay. let's hope uh, you know to god that this is what uh, all the candidates actually have in mind because um, you know if 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 it gets worse than yeah. this i don't know where nigeria will be on the map well firstly i must commend INEC again for a wonderful outing in the Osho state yeah, election definitely. and it was a, a huge step up from what we saw in the equity governorship election now is it enough to predict that the 2023 election is going to be a smooth I don't sale? Think it's absolutely not enough. Mm -hmm. but then i mean they showed commitment mm -hmm. and they've showed will and they drive. And, and hopefully some bad egg politicians mm. want to use what happened you know in the ocean state elections yes. you know to you know uh, re-strategize and you know make things difficult in other you know state elections and also the 2023 elections as well True, true. And it, it's also a good thing because, you know, we as the media did quite an excellent job covering the election. I mean, it was on a lot of TV stations, radio stations, and as well newspaper to think that a so state governorship election could affair. get mm -hmm. exactly that much coverage, which showed that a lot of people were watching. And so the, BVA's, is, uh, the Beavers also, also you know, yes, played a huge exceptional, role. Exceptional, exceptional. Yeah. You know, we had reports of voting commencing as early as 30 a.m. in the morning, so which is which is quite something. All right, Ekiti, by the way, let's uh, take a look at some of the stories on Daily uh, Trust Saturday. And we have our numbers. Uh, the, number of rep uh, the number reported as Nigeria's total debt stock as of first quarter of 2022 is 41.6 trillion. Why are you looking at me? The well, money it, is huge. The Nigeria, money is huge. Right, Nigeria, Nigeria <laughs> to get to the so 1.60 trillion naira hmm, is uh, reported as Nigeria's total debt stock as of first quarter of 2022. So now we're, what? We're I swallowed saliva. I don't know. <laughs> 
Look, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't. Because this, this is, this is much. <coughs> Let's it's not even, It is. I'm telling you, very huge. All right. So, uh, a number of candidates that scored above 200 during the 2022 Unified Te uh, Tertiary Matriculation Examination is 378,639 only. Now, talking about that, a jam has actually reduced its cut of a mark to 140. Uh, for universities and 120 for, you know, polytechnics. Like, what is actually happening? The educational system, you know, our students are not going to school, you know, they're at home working and learning skills. And then you actually have, you know, uh, the cutoff mark being 140. I remember in our time, even if you're going for a social science or arts course, the uh, cutoff mark would be from way 180, over, you know, from yeah, 180 and way above. Over, way over 150. Do you understand? 180 and above. But now we have 140, and I'm sure even, even for science students as well. Like, what is going on? How do we expect the education, the you know, the quality of education, of education to actually improve, improve with this? So um, I think I've been looking at the future implications of the reduction of um, the cutoff mark. And I'm what sorry, I can say is, should JAM be bringing down their standard or should the schools be upping their standard? Okay, so now this disparity now is what will come to play because JAM has reduced the cutoff mark to 140. But then remember, the school has its own cutoff, so will the department have theirs. So this is just a benchmark hmm. that if you have this, you know, yeah, if you scored this number, mm -hmm. you know, in your jam, if you score one for so embarrassing. Very soon, it's going to be if twenty. You, they should as well reduce <laughs> it to four, you know. But if you, it's it's not it's not a guarantee that you're going to get admitted in the university because remember these universities have standards uh, of that course. Amadou Bello University mm -hmm. has standards that mm -hmm. you know uh, you they wouldn't be. exactly. So when you have this cut off mark that jam is actually trying to reduce it to. These schools are also going to have to stand their ground to say, look, we are not going to compromise on our standards. Mm. If you don't have this, you know, um, uh, if you don't have this number. score, mm -hmm. don't expect to be admitted. And also remember that there are delicate courses in the universities ca that cannot afford to reduce their cutoffs because it is really and truly one of the few metrics you could use to measure the intelligence and mm. capacity of a student who is mm. going to be enrolled into such courses. Exactly. For example, medicine, anatomy, you know, and every, you know, course that has and, to and do... Then, and, then, and then you, you actually have a lot of half-baked, you know, students graduating and then going into the labor market mm. with, you know, I don't know, nothing, you nothing, see, nothing when to you bring begin, to the table. When, when you begin to think about all of this, it just gives you a perspective as to why you know, um, the academic staff union is on strike. And that is why I understand. Now, it's unfortunate because at the end of the day, the biggest losers of the strike is going to be students who mm -hmm, have been course. at home for countless number of months. And at the end of the day, when the strike is called mm -hmm. off, the lecturers will be paid arrears. Exactly. These students and are the left students with nothing and, you know, except wasted time. Exactly. And Start from where they stopped, exactly. if not from the beginning. And then because brains how many that have them... been sleeping because they would not be reading. Exactly. What's how many of them are actually, you know, keeping up with, you know, studies? If you look at it, the, 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 uh, for, let me give an example. Lecture theatres in universities, especially federal and state universities, are not actually in the best shape. You know, when it comes to um, state-of-the-art equipment, you would agree with Let's me that Nigerian universities suffer Let's, all of this. Do you, does, do you have a refinery? Does your country have Are a you refinery? asking me? Uh -huh. So let's not even go there. Well, all right, the, so let's move on. Still talking <laughs> about numbers. The number of civil servants reported to the ICPC for prosecution over failure to get verified on the integrated payroll, uh, personnel payroll, is 3,657. Now, we actually have you know, um, people complaining about this IPPIS, mm -hmm. and then you have, you know, civil servants being, you know, uh, reported for prosecution. Like, you know, what is it? Because most times, this IPPIS, a lot of people have, have actually complained that um, it's not consistent. You know, even when the salaries get paid, 
some months they even get some they got you know less than what they they're supposed to get Definitely. paid and all that you you get so I what is actually I, I don't have all of the information why why do they need to be prosecuted prosecuted i don't have all of the information because i am not a civil servant so uh, i would not know what to say particularly as it you know as it pertains the ippis but like you said a lot of them have actually complained in fact asu has described it as a fraud, of course, and they have rejected in totality. And this is you know, one the of the reasons of why IPs. exactly they are, they are on strike. strike because they are rejecting it completely. And I heard them, you know, talking along along the lines of them working and sweating off, you know, to to earn their living. Of course, and IPs is just going to be an attempt to truncate, you know, the total cost of what it is that they've earned over the course of their working. You know, in these institutions. All right. So the number of criminal suspect, uh, criminal suspects arrested by the Kano Police Command in 24 days is 200. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, we'll move on to more of the stories. Um, we have uh, this particular story about the use of kuskura. Mm, that that's mean? Uh, d uh, dangerous rice, on, actually on dangerous rice in Zaria. Okay. And kuskura is a popular name for a herbal substance consumed primarily as an intoxicant by youths, women, and the elderly in some parts of Zaria, Kaduna State. Now, the substance is a herbal drug, you know, uh, being used or being abused and now taken as a replacement for some banned substances. The abuse of Kuskura is rampant in Zaria as married women, schoolgirls, and boys are not left out of, you know, uh, the disturbing practice. Now, you know, it's, 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 it's majorly, you know, uh, abuse, you know, drug abuse, majorly drug abuse. A lot of people still use this particular drug. It's a herbal drug, even though we know that herbs are, you know, um, are mild, natural remedies. natural remedies and all that. But it depends on how you mix them as well. Because I've heard stories of, you know, uh, some people who don't even know how to mix agbo, mm. you know, because so these, these, yes, these drugs are not actually prescribed. True. So they are not prescribed and they're quantity. not NAFDAQ certified. True. So you don't even know what you're taking mm. in. You don't even know at what point they get bad. Exactly. So you, don't you don't know, know for how long they've been on the shelf. You've stopped taking drugs and you're not taking you don't poison. Exactly. Mm. So, you know, uh, but, you know, it's been abused by women, uh, you know, girls and also boys. So I think it's left to the NDLA, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, as it, well mm -hmm. as NAVDAC to swing into action because mm. we cannot afford to have the myriad of challenges we're having and still and have to still deal have with the drug, drug surge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely. They're doing so much, especially, you know, in the airports. I think they should go to all these uh, yes, locals, ke true, uh, local true, chemists true. as well and, you know, find out. Because as if you read this particular feature, you find out that, you know, uh, you ha in Zaria alone, you actually have a lot of, uh, you know, these drugs in local care. But then, it's actually, they say it's being used as a replacement for cough syrup. It means... <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> I, I really don't know no. what that leak is about, but no, it well, means it, it means it's a cheaper replacement, you know, for people who, uh, like we said, abuse drug and who wants to actually get high. So, if it's a cheap replacement for cough syrup, is it replacing the 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 the, the, uh, the effect of the okay, cough the syrup? Yes, of, not. The actual yes, use of drugs cough like tramadol syrup. and all that. You okay, know. okay, so, so now I understand. Mm -hmm. So, all right. <laughs> oh, you understand now. Oh, no, I, I, I didn't understand this. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> understand all the way. So. Oh, my goodness. All right, I think we will uh, soon be wrapping up. And um, let's see. On uh, Okay, there's a story on Encounter. And... Uh, you know how a lot of us, while well, we're a lot younger, we used to play with sand and we water. We used hands. to make everything. You go to the beach mm. for bougie children. You mm. go to the beach and make castles. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. But, mm. Okay. Okay. Now, um, Trust TV actually, uh, Daily Trust actually met with a 13-year-old who says he wants to become a civil engineer and he built a miniature Bruno flyover. His name is Musa Sani. And, uh, you know, uh, he built a prototype of the first uh, state's first flyover at the popular customs roundabout in Meduguri using mud. And he says his dream is to become a civil engineer. And uh, 
the governor of Maiduguri actually went to see him. So that's, hopefully that's he's impressive. on his way to achieving his mm. dreams. The, there's a lot of untapped dreams out there, mm. you know, across the country from mm. the north down to the south. And I would just hope that, you know, the government is able to harness their potential before mm. they are snagged away from us by, you know, by, by the West. Remember the, the guy who, um, what did he do again? I think he was a coder or something. He he was a programmer, and now he got he got an appointment with one of these big tech companies outside Nigeria. Yeah, of course. That is one intelligent, yeah. one good hand we've lost again to brain drain, all because you know probably the right uh, kind of persons or resources are mm -hmm. not being invested into these people to ensure that they achieve you know their fullest potential. Okay, well, um, you know, uh, it also helps if you have family or parents who believe in your dreams and support you all the way, mm. you know, because uh, according to what I'm seeing here, you know, uh, the parents actually went as far as buying him paint, you know, that looks like tar, so when he's building... Uh, you know the prototypes with you know mud. He when he's paints. constructing, when he's constructing, when he's constructing, that's also a good thing to have. But mm. also remember, sometimes it's difficult because you know showing support might not be all of it, and showing support can also be financial. Mm, so no, the cost definitely. implication of these things sometimes could be something that the parents cannot provide, and that is where you know well-meaning individuals and the government also need to come you know into play to ensure that this kind of talented persons are not just left to waste. Okay, let's take a look at a few more stories on other newspapers and then uh, we call it a day on um, you know, uh, this uh, newspaper review. Uh, let's talk about the untold story of a woman who set her Cairo-based lover ablaze and committed suicide. Now, this particular story went viral, and uh, she accused him of cheating. Infidelity. You know, of cheating. Infidelity. What's the difference? Call it infidelity, please. There's, you know, there's, difference. There's a bougie word. Okay, Don't she accused cheating. him of infidelity and cheating. <laughs> Yes, but then, you know, uh, he actually made it to the hospital, but he didn't survive, you know, his burns. And, you know, uh, she actually ran away and committed suicide. Like, I, 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 I don't know, I don't know. I, I, the other day also, we actually, we, didn't, we actually read a story of a woman who, a man who set his wife ablaze in the house, and then he was trying to run away. She dragged she him dragged in, him, and, so and that was how here. they all and died they actually, together. Yes, like, unfortunately. like what is actually happening in marriages and relationships these days? Whatever yeah. happened to you understanding your partner? Me? No, I'm talking about in general. Okay. You understanding your partner, knowing the kind of person they are, what they can tolerate, and you know what they cannot. Well, do we say it's because people rush into marriages these days? Do we say it's because the pressure has increased? Most I don't people, know. most people don't actually rush into marriages. So what's now the they case? just go into relationship for the fun, one mm -hmm. or two things, and they don't bother about understanding the person they're dating. So do, would you? They would just you, feel as long as we connect, mm, as long as you know we're happy, what, we're cool. What, what does it mean to connect? I mean, what does it really mean to connect? That's what I'm Is saying. It? Exactly. So you know, it, because it's not enough. They underestimate for, what connection mm, means. Exactly. It's not. It's not about you knowing how to cook. You dressing fine. You looking good. We look. Uh, look. Look. Uh, you know, us looking good together. Vibes. Yeah. Exactly. And that's it. And then or or liking the, the same things. It's and not all true, about that. True. Like because I'm talking about on a deeper level because you know you're dating someone who you intend to get married to. You, you need to. You need to spend to spend the rest, the rest of your, your life with. It's, 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 it's actually more spiritual long, than physical. You exactly, know that, right? It's such a long commitment. So I do not see a reason why I would like somebody and, you know, make the decision to spend the rest of my life with somebody just because he has vibes. Or just or she because she gives me peace. Oh, or she, she doesn't have issues. The thing is, I what said, kind like, of peace? You've not even seen this person at your worst, at his worst or her worst, and you're assuming. I remember all the... Um, the fancy stages where you talk for two, three, four, five hours. You know, the have you eaten do you know, stage. Do you know, it's even one thing for mm. you to be in a relationship and get to know the person while in a relationship. Marriage is a different ball game altogether. People change. In ma marriage can actually bring out what. Change? Yeah. 
yeah, people change, especially marriage. It changes people. No, I don't think it and changes it brings people. I out, think it brings out. It don't, exactly. it bring, no, that's what I'm saying. It changes people and it brings out, you know, what even that person doesn't even know they have. True. Do you understand? So True. you need you need you need to be there all the way. You need to understand. Do you get that? Okay, no matter what happens, I would I would, I would, I would be there. I would try to understand this new cycle. Mm. I would try to understand this new version of Dashen. Mm. Do you get? And you how need do to, I cope the, with the it? same how way, the same, the same way. Yeah, exactly. How do I tolerate? The same way people change. The same way you should actually evolve. True. It's all about evolution. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. So, okay, so you know, Dashen has been on the that. road and she has found it quite important of her to school me on why I need to understand my spouse. I don't know why Dashen had to do that this morning and how she was warning me on the reason why I, I need to understand you, and why I need to evolve as a partner. Well, Dashen, thank you very much for that. Any other we also have for? Dorothy Bachelors advising women to quit toxic relationships. Now, she said, now, once it becomes toxic, Quit it. I read a story this morning. Okay. What about? About a lady who had a boyfriend who she really liked. And they were two, just barely two weeks into the relationship. And uncle said, I want you to address me as Lord. <laughs> and she thought he was, she thought he was joking. Was like, oh, I hear it. Yeah, she thought he was joking. And the then, same way I should be addressed like as Lady Dashen. Eisteton of Londonshire. Londonshire. <laughs> <laughs> London, so what Cuba. happened? <laughs> okay, so she went on, you know, a friendly date with a male pal of hers, and he he was calling her phone. Mm. And she said that was how she saw her Lord's caller, and she picked <laughs> the caller, and she was like, hello? <laughs> silence. Hello? Silence. Yes. I can't hear you. Still silence. I was trying I, to Yes. He, he ended the call, yeah. and then he called back. Mm -hmm. Pick the call again. Hello, hello, hello. She couldn't hear him. Apparently, he still wasn't talking. It was a breathing competition. She still ended the call because, well, mm -hmm. she, she didn't know what mm -hmm. to say. And then he called back and he was like, where are you? I, I'm at he, was, he was trying to, to exactly. understand he what to the understand environment, the ambience, yeah, the ambience. The where is she? Yeah. True. So, I'm at also place with a friend. Where exactly? She didn't want to disclose the location because of fear that he might come and cause a scene. Mm. Well, after much persistence, the friend just advised that, look, just give up the location. And she did. Lo and behold, her lord came. Are you serious? No, that's toxic already I'm now. outside. Come and meet me outside. She went outside to meet her lord. <laughs> and her lord started ranting. What are you doing here? You was a boyfriend. You, you're doing this and you're doing that. The boyfriend came and Oga shouted, get out. She said at that moment she knew that she was done. And then she voiced it, look, I'm done, I'm not going to continue with this. And her Lord, her gracious Lord, broke down in tears yeah. and started crying. That's, the, he, that's a manipulator. And he, that's, 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 those, those are, you know, uh, uh, characters of a narcissist. Yes. All right, but, you know, we have to actually wrap the up. We will, we will definitely talk about definitely, this some because more. It's really interesting. Exactly. So uh, we'll take a break now. We'll be back in a bit. When the situation where you find that they look like this, not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.
Music is said to be a way of expressing and being able to relate to other people. It can personify emotions in life if written well. Music is a source of inspiration and expression. Music adds awesomeness to people or many people's uh, you know, everyday lives. Now, right here in the studio, we're being joined by Lekon Moses Oyewekpo. And uh, he's a musician popularly known as Limo, and he joins us right here on Daybreak Extra. Good morning, and thank you for joining us, uh, Limo. Good morning. Welcome yeah. to the show. Okay, so Limo, now first of all, mm, we would love to see your eyes. So if you don't mind removing your glasses, thank okay. you so much. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Yeah. All right, so oh, we'll just get glasses and wear <laughs> our so, no, we get dark shades. Dark shades. So we all look cool. All so, oh. can you tell us who Limo is? Uh, how did your journey start? You know, what inspired you to go into music? Wow. Well, um, you've said it. Limo, Leko Moshizoyoko, that's the name. Um, Limo hails from Choir State. Um, on you, local government to be precise. Uh, okay, Limo is also an accountant. Mm. So you have a day job. I okay. do. <laughs> oh. And I'm a musician, um, an actor, and a model as well. Okay, so what gave you um, the inspiration to want to venture into music? Um, music actually has been a thing for me because um, I could remember the days of um, words and pictures that in Kano, um, which was. Um, sponsored by British Council, mm. you get as a then, but I don't know, for now they've not been doing it. So, And also, um, when I was working then, um, there is this um, competition we do every year, that's yearly, so sponsored by ShopRite. Mm. So I happened to qualify to represent ShopRite Nigeria in South Africa. Oh wow! Yeah, that's quite a so big. So, which I came third place. I didn't qualify for the finals, mm -hmm. but I see myself as a winner. You oh, get of course, so. definitely. Of course, definitely. Yeah, that's where the journey kicked off. So I ventured fully into music. Okay, so what what genre of music now do you dabble in? Actually, I'm into Afro fusion now currently. Okay, so you're a protege of Burna Boy. <laughs> That's what people say. I think Burner Boy is the only one who does Afrofusion. Afro right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. no, but you, do, you have a lot of them coming up, you know. Yes, yeah. yeah this, is the first, this is the first person, oh. or the first artist who would admit that, that he's he into Afrofusion, Afro. that I'm meeting one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if you've seen anyone anyways. Anyways, go on. Yeah, Afrofusion, conscious music, mm. you get. And um, I have this um, thing for northern, north, northern vibes as well. Mm. Mm. That actually, I, 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 I wanted to create that word, which is Afronaut. Okay. But I've never seen somebody, like an artist, come out to say, okay, I'm an Afronaut kind of an artist. But I knew um, I'm a very kind of versatile artist. I switch, I sing, I rap, and the other way around. So that's why I put it as Afrofusion. You can't really place it, but it comes from your mind, you feel it. This is just a conscious music that only conscious minds will understand what you're saying. Mm. So okay. which, which artists are your greatest influence? The greatest Bonobo. influence. <laughs> Why do you say Burna Boy? Like? <laughs> well, but he, but, but he, he said he doesn't look up to Burna Boy, do you? Um, I have, uh, you know, actually, actually, I love Burna Boy. Uh -huh. Burna Boy is one of the persons that I look up to, oh. actually, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, but so I'm, so surprised he, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. He <laughs> just. He just. Okay. Like okay, you read surprised. my mind, actually. Then it shouldn't come as news to you that I love. I is, am a fan. You're the of first person saying it. Really I really am fun. a huge fan. So if I hear Burner Boy and I hear that somebody is influenced by Burner Boy, you get excited. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Look, so. Yes, of course I do. Ask your question. Okay. All right. So, uh, moving on. Now, you, st you, st you started from Kano, right? Yes, I do. So, uh, and right now, you moved to Abuja to yeah. still pursue 
you know, uh, same music. Yeah. You know, what made you make that move? What influenced that move? And if you had to compare doing music in Kano and also in Abuja, you know, what would be the comparison? Um, so far, so good. I always tell people that a lot of people say, you notice like you, you paused a little. What happened? And I told them that um, there's one thing that a lot of people don't understand. If you're comfortable in your comfort zone, that means you're not doing well. You understand? Success comes with challenge. I believe I've done a lot in Kano. You get? Uh, I can't really say this, but a lot of people will see it as being, being, being proud. You get? I can virtually say that I'm the first artist from Kano who came out on his own. That break out on its own, featured a very big artist, two artists on the same song. Okay, without being signed. Mm -hmm. Signed from label. anybody, yeah. Nobody's saying you're proud, you know, you, <laughs> you own it with but your it's chest. But something to be yeah, proud of, of actually. Course. No, you, you own, own it, it. say yeah. it. Be proud mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, so I did this myself. A lot of people um, were surprised. They'd be like, so I did that and I believe I had a lot of support from radio, OAPs, um, a lot of people clubs and all that. So I felt, come on, you're okay with Kano. Why not just leave this place? Go elsewhere, do something. Like, it's not just here. Mm. It's all about there. Mm. You get So I made that move. And a lot of people don't understand something. Because you don't see content every day, don't mean I'm not working. not working. I'm actually working. I'm working on an album. Mm. An album is not just a job. I've been working on that for I think two years now. You get two years now. Though I'm dropping singles in between, often you of understand. Mm -hmm. but relevant. I'm actually working. Okay, uh, talking about working on albums, I think we'll just take a short breather to give us an opportunity to see the work of Limo. Don't go anywhere. on trust tv and we still have our guest in the studio multi-talented limo so limo let me ask you now let's go to acting 
So how did you find yourself in, you've told us about music, obviously, so how did you manage, or how did you just find yourself in acting? Huh, wow. Acting, actually, I'm a big fan of, um, is it movie, acting, entertainment generally, you understand? Okay. So I believe as an, uh, as an entertainer, you should be open to anything that comes your way, you understand? So I've loved acting for a very long time. So there was this time I met Alinu Hu okay. yeah, at, uh, at an event, you get in Kano. And just with play, I was like, ah, you were like, ah, superstar, superstar. I'd be like, ah, okay, don't call me superstar, please. Anytime you have, even if it's just one scene, you know, mm. cool. put your boy now, you understand? And this, this thing I'm saying is about, I think, four to five years ago. Oh, wow. You get. So when I moved down to Abuja, that day I was just on my own. I just got a message like, can you make it to Kano tomorrow? I'm like, ah, tomorrow for what? He said, I have a movie over for you, come for audition. I'm like, wow, this is an opportunity. So I just like, okay, let me go. No need that I'm even going to be like um, a star You're actor. Key role. Mm, like a star actor in the movie, wow. like you get. And this movie, we, sh we shot this movie last year. Yeah. You get. So just like that, the movie just came in and. Okay, so, but, 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 but how have you been able to balance, you know, hasn't the movie, you being a, uh, an actor, yeah. affected your music? How have you been able to balance music, and you know, acting, you know, uh, accounting, yeah. and also, you know, uh, being a model? Um, actually, I'm very multitasking. Okay. Yeah, I'm very multitasking. I can't say the same of some people <laughs> here anyways, but... So... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I've met Speak my fellow for multitasker. Speak for yourself, yeah, I'm speaking bro. for myself. <laughs> I've met my fellow multitasker. Yeah, actually, I'm multitasking. You get so um, um, I will have account, account, you know, as an accountant, that's just my profession. Mm. You get, and I think music is my my how do I even call it? It's my thing. Mm. This is my okay. lifestyle. I see it as a lifestyle. You okay. get because um, I've been doing this thing for a very long time. And I can't stop. That's it. You get so. And the movie aspect is just I see it as lifestyle as well. You get because as an I see myself as just an entertainer. So I believe if you just come, okay, come and model for me now. I'll do it. You get so I'm not this artist like I will say okay. I'm just only into music. Okay. Just music. No. I see myself as just this model there. So. You can just see anything in me, and I'm there for So it. which of uh, these careers do you actually make more money from? I see, that was going Are to be my serious? next question. Are you serious? Oh, I, I like money. Yeah. See, if I'm not earning from this thing, I don't think it's which worth doing. Which one? Which one? Which one is money? paying you? Is it between the, the movie? All uh, of tell them. us about all, all of them. All want of to them. know. Maybe, see, is it not? Yeah, I yeah. Can, look, I can sing. <laughs> <laughs> is this song that I'm, if you are making money, tell us, let me know if I would start my own career um, and that should will have me on our show. The thing is, music currently, you understand, there's, there's money in music currently, you understand. Mm -hmm. So you make more money from music? Not more money, but, but you make money the thing is, I can't even balance it. He like, they're on the same. Hey, don't mind him. <laughs> you know, we asked one question. It's a simple question. Simple. You just mm -hmm. choose, is it music so, so or movie? So that it would discourage so us. So that will know. No, no, no. no. I'm not no, discouraging you. That should you act. You get. Me, I will do, I will sing. For me, I'm not actually doing it for the, for the money. Okay. You get. But you I, don't mind. No, if the money comes, why would I, I grab it? Mind. Like, okay. we're actually, we can't do without money. Of course. Currently, you get. But for me, Music, I'm actually, I'm not doing for, 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 the, for money. the money, because okay. okay. currently, my, my tune card, my iTunes account, okay. I have some stuff there, but okay. I just feel like, just be there. Okay, now let's talk about, you know, music in Nigeria. Yeah. You know, uh, what do you think about its evolution? Because I actually, you know, read uh, a, a report that Thames will be featuring, you know, Beyonce, Beyonce. in yeah. Yeah. one of her, her upcoming album and sure. all that. So, you know, Nigerians are actually doing a lot globally. And even in the U.S., you know, the other day I was speaking to a friend and then he, 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 he made me listen to one of the radio stations and it was uh, Thames, that essence, Thames. Thames, Thames and Whiskey's song that was playing. So they play a lot of Nigerian songs. So what do you think about, you know, the evolution of music in Nigeria? Wow, like, sincerely, the world is actually looking at Nigeria at the moment. You get, um, this is our time. So I believe 
every everybody everyone or any artist or a singer that you know you're actually singing this is the time you need to like buckle up because mm. what we're seeing in the before the end of this year or next year i believe nigeria will just be at that stage where you see people are kind of ways. You have to come to Nigeria and just come and like <laughs> do I something. Think, I'm think telling you. Coming. Oh, but for insecurity, a lot of people yeah, are afraid. That's, that's true. Mm -hmm. But I think they have they they will have to do something that that security issues, because um, there was this stuff I saw about. Is it I've forgotten? Is it making look kind of ways? Somebody posted something. I was like, Hey, bro, send me your details and everything. I need you to come to over to America. Like, he just saw a freestyle of that Nigerian artist. Wow. Mm. You get, like, straight up. Wow. Now, look at DJ Khalid now, farming for this other artist I've forgotten. OK, this guy um, from Black Sheriff from Ghana. True. Mm. You understand? So this Black Sheriff actually came through Nigeria. True. So now, the True. center stage now I think he's is Nigeria. In Nigeria. Yeah. Nigeria now is now the center stage, you get. So um, to me, that's why I said I'm actually working at the moment. And thank God I have my fan base over there too and I have um, a very strong um, manager you get she's not a Nigerian okay yeah she's based in London wow yeah. that's uh, that's that's uh, really so does she come into Nigeria or does she manage you from the UK no she managed me from the UK but oh, wow. she was in Nigeria so three months ago okay okay so we met and we discussed a lot and so actually working hmm. big name big name okay working. that's interesting that should I, I feel you know, it's more, it's, it's, it really transcends the Nigerian thing, you know, because okay. it, with the whole spotlight we're experiencing now, it's not just focused on Nigeria, right? It's focused on the entire Africa. Africa. But yeah, yes, but Nigeria, Nigeria really course, sets the trend, more. you know, mm -hmm. we set the foundation and all of that. And it's really good for African music and Nigerian music, especially because if you look at, you know, the last couple of years, you've mm. seen a monumental improvement in the output that these you know musicians have been giving no, out definitely yeah. i think when so, it comes to it's just like you know when opportunity knocks mm. are you ready so when the opportunity knocks nigeria was actually i just more loved ready how we, were, than, we it, it looked like we just prepared like ourselves we're prepared. for that exactly. exact so, moment and when it came we so we're we just, you know, it. ripping the dead. You know, I mean, I mean, look at terms. And there's a lot of, of focus on Nigerian ago. music yeah. these days. Exactly. Yeah. Terms of two years ago, Omani literally you. came out during lockdown. I'm telling you. You know? I remember when they were arrested, both arrested in arrested Uganda, in Uganda yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so and now, I mean, they, they're Omani, getting Omani awards, on you know, nominations. Just just you imagine. Terms has gone on to be on Drake's album, and she's now Beyonce. Beyonce. And then whiskey, the baba of them all <laughs> is being whiskey. That so one it's, is it's even really on impressive. This, almost on the same it's, level with yeah, Beyonce. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, uh, let's ask this. Uh, you've talked about your journey, which yeah. is really, really humbling. But then I would want to ask, which big artist yeah. current, is currently on your radar, you know, to feature, to feature. or to work with? Hmm. You know Alino who sings too, right? Yeah, he does. House and music. Yeah. Maybe you can remix. <laughs> so maybe, maybe you can remix this one. Have you, have you done anything with Sani Danger? No, I haven't. Okay. We've no, never met before actually, but from afar, like... Okay, so who now? Mm. Let me not lie, truly. Yeah. It's David. Okay. I know what I'm saying. Though. Why? Um, you are offending whiskey FC no, fans. No, 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 no. Yeah, forget you need to see. You need to select your words carefully. Don't now. just speak from your heart. Because there are a lot of whiskey fans who are just watching. Like, who is this guy? So tread carefully. I know what I'm saying. That. Okay, okay. Tell us why. Tell um, us why. I would have said Bonaboy, but okay. I know what I'm saying. Davido, both why? of them, they are like people that I really watch, like I look up to. Yeah. There's this thing about the video that I always have an argument with people about, you understand? It's not about the him that people are saying. Okay. Okay, that's OBO or more about lower of a mm. thing. No, 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 no. There's this human in him. Mm. You understand that? Um, I'm yet to like describe it to a lot of people. Like, I can't really tell you that this is who the video is. He's very, like, that, that's just the word. But have human. you tried reaching out to him? Yeah, I have, but 
at some time, you know, it's not that easy to be, it's not like easy to access like that. That's okay, true. you know, you know, as, as I'm actually true. talking, you know, something actually just came to my mind, you know, um, uh, if uh, you were to look at, aside, you actually did a music with Harry Songs, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but would Harry you song. say that actually brought Harry you song, out, like, first Skibby. of all? Yeah. Would you say that brought, brought you out? Um, the way you wanted or the way they're supposed to be, you know, in the limelight. Would you say that brought you out? Because sometimes when yeah. we're asking these questions, you know, um, should we say we see the future <laughs> <laughs> and we advise yes. for the yeah, future? Okay. So, so take you know, us as your therapist. <laughs> um, let him answer that question first, then okay. i tell you what I think. Um, for that question, mm. when I did that song, I thought that was my breakout, like, I actually used to say that's my that was my breakout. You so, get. Okay. Uh, I thought they were going to see me like this guy, like okay, because I believe if I'm working with my like my senior like colleague, my senior colleague yeah. he should carry me along, and that's what I wish to do for even my own junior colleague as well. Mm. You get, because you're already there. It's just for you to just like okay, show me love, mm. and let mm. people like okay, who is this guy? I'll be like you get. But I did that song with them, and unfortunately. I didn't get the good energy. No, you were expecting. I expected, you get. But I still <laughs> believe that. You understand? <laughs> so I what's the song about? Up Nepa. Yeah, that Up Nepa song. Okay, so I, right, want, I want to I'll, hear the song. Can I, can I, yes, we'll yeah, hear the song, but let me advise him first before okay. we hear the song, right? Okay. Do you know one person I actually feel can actually take you because Spirit just spoke to me mm, now. Yeah. <laughs> Take you to the limelight no, now, the and you actually have right. easy access to yeah. is Kiss Daniels. Mm. If you try working with him now, yeah. you something will happen. It. I'm sure. All right, so let's take a look at you know uh, the Up Nepa right. song <laughs> with Harry songs. And Skippy. Sure you know, say na hop nepa, oh. hop nepa. Oh. Timba no wato, we go shy you to put them oh. oh yeah, oh go me do, money do, shy you do, do this if you do, do it. Party muna do, hop nepa. A lot si wale ho, hop nepa. Party ko wo wale ho, hop nepa. Party shana wale ho. I want the live wire. I want the high tension. I want the bad wire. I want the transformer. I want the live wire. I want the high tension. I want the bad wire. That was, uh, you know, Limo and uh, Harry Songs and Skibi, you know, singing up Nepa. What actually informed, you know, your decision to actually sing about Nepa? And uh, yeah, let's start with that first. Then I would follow up with the next question. Okay. Um, I believe every Nigerian, even the kids of today, <laughs> they know the word up Nepa, actually. Mm. So, um, like I said, um, I'm this kind of artist that deal with things like, okay, up Nepal, this, bring, this, this means light. Mm. So I said, okay, what can I, how, can I, how can it be relatable for people not just come and shout out up Nepal? I'm like, okay, let's do something like, okay, you're happy, up Nepal. You're getting married, up Nepal. That's like happiness, that's mm. light, mm. that's joy. something positive, mm -hmm. joy. You understand? So, so I fuse that word. They use it to like, okay, you're gonna get 
your breakthrough of okay, Nepal, blessings and your all days that. All right, now you actually talked about this song not, you know, taking you to the heights that you actually thought it will take you. Uh, do you think it is actually about, you know, uh, the people you featured or the song itself? Do you think you were scammed or you didn't really do, you know, a good job as you thought with the song? Um, sincerely, I did a good job because uh, I can virtually say, as I when I released the song, then even up to Abuja, I do get um, gigs. You get, I do come from shows in Abuja. Mm -hmm. Like virtually north, north side, mm. you understand? I was just there. The song was everywhere on the streets. Mm. There was a time, uh, even, even all these um, banks, they called me, I do go for their shows. Like for mm. like two times, I think Access and UBA. Mm. Like I was indoors for like two years. Mm -hmm. So, so, so it, took you, it took you to, you know, the it step, yeah. a, step a step forward, yeah, forward, you know. Yes, even though what you had in mind, yeah. you know, was was it, but it took you actually a step forward because I was beginning to think you actually scammed. No, but just the people I, I taught, like, would take it higher than mm. what I did. Would push you. You push didn't me, use yeah. the people who would do that. <laughs> do you get, do you, do you understand what I'm manager? saying? I'm, no, but well, you, well, you agree I, with me, I, don't I, you? Yeah, I, I agree with you. You're giving yeah, so, exactly so much so. tips that it's beginning <laughs> to look like you would do better working with him. No. Mm. Let's go ahead. So sorry, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm open, I'm open, I'm sorry, I'm open to advice. I'm, I'm open sorry. to advice, actually. It's not for free. Oh. No, I'm open to advice. For, which, which, one, which one is this one? <laughs> See, there's money outside. You better go and make money. This one is, yes, yeah, do, I do, I do, I Anyways, um, Limo, okay, so... There's this question we always ask yeah. our guests, uh, and that's where do you see yourself in, say, the next five to ten years? Let me ask Ibrahim's question. Okay. Since I'm taking Ibrahim's seat yeah. now. Where do you see yourself in the next two years? Next two years. Uh -uh. I don't understand. Hmm. I think next two years. Are we doing something? Something big? Okay. Um, Are you going to give us a hint? <laughs> Actually, my album, I believe my album is going to be a step further. So, okay. You understand? <coughs> so, that's why it's taking me a long time to finish it. But in that album you intend to bring out, do you actually have famous people featured in the album? Mm. Besides Harry songs? Aside Harry song, yeah. I have somebody, but... You have who? I have somebody. Okay. Somebody is there, and I have like two people who are working. We're talking actually currently. Interesting. You get so. Um, I think I have like two to three artists. Okay, there. I think uh, that would uh, be. That would. Be that would help. Mm -hmm. would, do, do you? Would you say that? Now I'm coming back to my question, okay. since Husena so rudely converted Sorry, my sir. question to hers. <laughs> would you say in say five or? 10 years' time, you would have achieved the level of fame okay. that you so hope and expected that um, the Up Nepal song would have given you. Yeah, I strongly believe. That's yes. an optimist. I strongly believe. I love yeah. your spirit. Because I'm actually working for that. Okay, so it's the Up Nepal song that you think will take you no, no, to... No, 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 not the Up Nepal song. Not the okay. But I just believe in the next five years, what I'm about or mm. what I'm working on mm. will take me there. All right. All right, uh, with that, uh, we think uh, we've exhausted all our questions. Uh, and uh, we would like to thank Limo for joining us on Daybreak Extra today. It was uh, a great time having you on the show. And we, we wish you all the best. We wish you all the best, okay? All right, so we'll take a quick breather, and when we come back, we'll move on to the next part of, uh, you know, the show.
every patriotic Nigerian should hear this. Any politician who means well for the people will never allow themselves or their supporters to engage in any vile and destructive activities. No politician who truly wants to serve the people and develop the nation will encourage his followers to destroy properties or take human lives before, during or after the elections. The Nigerian public must watch out for these traits and isolate any politician who encourages supporters to engage in violence. No genuine politician or patriot will cause trouble and seek to destroy the very society which they aspire to lead or develop. Politicians who have the good of the people at heart will not allow themselves or their followers to engage in violence, destruction of properties, and then taking of lives. Be vigilant. By their words, you shall know them. Shun violence. Stay away from politicians who want you to do so. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. No. Welcome back. You're still watching Daybreak Extra on Trust Television. Now, moving on to quite more interesting topics. Uh, we have Phoebe Ashemude. She is a film producer and actress. She starred as the lead actor in an upcoming movie titled 23, The Friend Zone. Uh, she also co-produced a movie called The Funeral. Now, Phoebe is here with us in the studio to share her journey so far and to tell us the process of filmmaking and the challenges involved. Phoebe, thank you for coming on the show. Good morning, Phoebe. Thanks for having me. Okay, now, away from all of that, I want to act film. <laughs> Are you ready? I want to be a movie star. Are you ready? <clears throat> what does it take? <laughs> what is involved? Are you ready to go through the process? Now, tell us the process. Okay. So, um, I start from being a movie star. Start on yes, the and then the process. I love gist. Anyway, okay. Let me, okay, gist, backstory. Yeah. So, growing up, yeah, I didn't really see myself as talented or, I could, or that I could do anything. And that's because I was around, like, very wonderful siblings that could do everything from mm -hmm. playing the instruments to being extra smart, all of that. And I always felt out of place, yeah. So, I'd always watch cartoons then. Mm -hmm. And so, I started developing my voice and trying to speak like them. So, I think that was where the process of me going into media even started in the mm -hmm. first place. So eventually I found out I could actually do something. 
And so I carried it on my head, like government work, like I put in so much effort, I started working on myself, and that was how I got into media. I studied theater arts in university. Oh, wow, beautiful. Yeah, I so, did. And, um, but then yeah. all of my majors were in media, so I was on radio for years, you know. And, but then I knew I was going to do film eventually, because apart from studying theater arts in my undergraduate, I also ha have a master's in it. So these were the things I had to go through. And um, in terms of the question that you've asked here, yeah, how to be a movie star, first of all, it comes with passion. Because it's a lot of work. Have passion, right? Well, Dash and have passion. Depends. Don't yeah, I? you have passion. <laughs> so it, it has to do with passion okay. because many times, especially at the initial stage, it may not really pay because you have to put your face out there. Mm -hmm. You know how the whole process thing works. Okay. Yeah. So you have to be passionate about it enough to grind, to work late hours, to meet people, drop your pride and your ego, and just do everything it takes to make it work. Okay. okay. Now uh, we know that. Um, being a filmmaker is quite a you know, laborious. In, it takes a lot of patience yeah, to actually be on the field. What keeps you motivated? Oh, what keeps me motivated? Apart from the fact that I love what I do. Yeah, That's um, the passion we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, passion. I love what I do. I have um, plans and ideas of how I want to portray my industry, especially in Nigeria and Africa. So those are some of the things that just keeps me motivated, keeps me going. And again, knowing that you have something to do and to finish, one of the things you're taught when you go into filmmaking is that you have very limited time. For example, you have to shoot a film and- um, You have a deadline. You have a deadline. They're mm -hmm. giving you like just three days to shoot and all wow. of that. Depends on the length, okay. could be a feature, could be a short film. So whatever it is, you know there's a deadline. And it is so interesting because Filmmaking just makes you see that time is money. Now yeah. you're given a particular budget to do a film. And then when you do all of your calculations, it's going to take you, say, maybe five days to do it. Now anything that makes you exceed that five days, it is money. Because you're actors on set, you have to feed them. Extra costs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You have to pay the crew people, especially the ones that you have to pay on a daily basis. Now, when your executive producer has given you the money that you need, mm. you've bro broken down your budget and all of that, and you exceed the time, where are you going to get the money from? It's going to come from your pocket, and mm. you know, you're not supposed to do that, well, except when you're just coming up. Most times, there are investors and all of that. So okay, okay. I was actually going to ask where you get your funding from. Oh, okay. So, um, there are investors. Film is like a huge business mm. in Nigeria. You just have to understand and be very prepared. For example, you get to meet people, you are exposed, maybe attend festivals and all of that. From there, you have conversations. You can, for example, if you are a budding filmmaker, you could start with your family and friends. Mm. To ask them, oh, I want to shoot a film, or gather all of the monies, and then shoot your film. So. Okay. So one, I have two questions, yeah. but I'll ask one now, and I'll take the other later. Later, okay. Now, talking about taking the whole thing on your head, it's good that you're taking this on your head. Some people are taking wickedness, like government work. <laughs> but anyways, um, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the question is, yeah. a major setback that filmmakers, movie producers, and upcoming actors and actresses face is rejection. Yeah. How do you deal with rejection? <sighs> For me, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer you know, in Jesus, and I pray. And then I affirm myself a lot. I know that when it comes to life, there is no room for failure or acceptance of failure. So most times I'm always very conscious of my mind, dealing with rejection. It happens, you stand up and you do it again, and again, and again. So yeah, uh, let me share one experience. Filmmakers really go through a lot, especially because people don't believe that it's a real job, you know, the Nigerian setting, the older generation, they just believe that you don't have a real job when you're into film mm -hmm. or media or a lot of things. So I was house hunting in Lagos one <laughs> recently. And so I was moving around checking for houses and then I got this particular house. It was what I wanted. It, the area I wanted, it, it was way, like within my budget, exactly mm -hmm. what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the part of what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> you could have seen, you should have seen the way they looked at me. Like, ah, this one is not ready with us. Like, mm. You're not ready. You're not ready with life. That thing really, really hurts me that I, I kept ranting about it to anybody that cared <laughs> to listen. Yeah. But you know, the house calls the shot. I can't do anything about it. Mm. You know, she gave me that look of get a real job. Mm. You know, so these are things that we have to face. 
and I feel like um, apart from this aspect in terms of you know um, being in the field also you just have to keep showing up mm -hmm. Th that's the only thing that will work show up put yourself out there as much mm -hmm. as you can and people are watching people would see you and eventually you get the break that you want all right, let's take a look at, you know, some of the uh, movies that you've actually worked on. Okay. I don't want to hear anything you have to say. Explain what you want to explain. No, what are you explaining? What exactly are you explaining? Oh, wow. That's why you forgot to make one. My well, Sammy is the sweetest 25 year old I know. He has these charming smiles that gets me every time. Sammy's all right now. Uh, Phoebe, yeah. let's uh, what can you tell us uh, about your upcoming project? Because we've actually seen watch the video of some of the things you actually worked on. You yes. know, tell us about your upcoming project. So, I would like to talk about the funeral, most importantly. Um, I recently went to film school at Ebony Live Academy, okay. and um, I was opportunity to work with other creatives mm. to make that what I think or I know is a masterpiece. You know, and um, the writer is such an amazing person because his mind just works in this very crazy way and that was why I, I really connected with the story and I wanted it so bad you know the funeral just talks about um, us having to understand that we should express ourselves as much as possible because the time is going to come when you're no longer be going to be on the face of the earth so if you love people you tell them don't assume communicate and that's what the story tells us you know about a girl who dies, she attends her own funeral and sees that people genuinely love her, but she never believed it and she never expressed it while she was alive. And it's a strong message I feel like everybody should embrace, mm. especially in this time where everybody tries to be hardcore, I don't show emotions, I don't show feelings, everybody's doing competition of, oh, I'm not going to reach out first, I'm not going to tell you about how I feel. So I feel like it's a message that should be talked about. And working on that project was, was an eye-opener you know, apart from the fact that it was tasking, because film is tasking, it was also beautiful because I got to work with brilliant minds. Mm. The directors, the angles that she came from mm. was just amazing. My co-producers, well, like, they were very, very, very amazing on the project, mm. you know. And the actors, like, the whole process from start to finish, the challenges we had, how we had to tackle it, find the solution, it's beautiful. Mm. I'm excited about it. And, um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be out. Um, exactly one week from now, and yes. Okay, so I okay, think so we're seeing the trailer on the screen now. Is it a short movie? Now. or yeah, a uh, short movie. How, how long is it? It's just 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, anyways, uh, back to the conversation. Me, I want to act film. I like film. But that aside, so let's talk about the business of filmmaking. So, you know, a lot of producers in the early 90s, 2000s, up to late 2010s have complained about a major issue, piracy. As a filmmaker in the industry, would you say you know, the issue of piracy has been addressed enough to enable these producers you know, recoup their investments yeah. hmm. in these movies? That's a very important question. And I'll say no. Okay. I don't think it has been tackled enough because you would see a situation whereby this is a cinema movie you don't go to the cinema, you're not supposed to watch it, but people have versions on their laptops and they're downloading mm. it. I feel like we don't have systems in place to curb that yet, but I believe that things are going to get better, you know. And again, um, it also depends on the, the way you distribute. You know, that's also very important. There are mm. some, um, for example, you put in a lot of effort and you have your film on these really huge streaming platforms most of the time it's pretty difficult to dub it but then this is this is the this is the digital age some things really cannot be avoided all you have to do is put your foot down get the right distributors 
to a large extent, is really, really out of your control. Mm -hmm. People will always find a way, so okay. it hasn't been tackled. Okay, so especially as I think um, piracy has actually gone digital. If you look at it, dashing because earlier it was regular dubbing using mm -hmm. CD plates and uh, but now you can actually tips. dub online, yeah. record yeah. screens online, and all record that. Screens and yeah, even music. If, mm -hmm. You could just even when you go to the cinema, you can actually record while it's playing. A lot of people actually people do that. People do that. Yes. Yeah, they well, do. Well, I think now in cinemas they don't allow phones into. Why well, had phones? Nigeria. No, it's not possible. No, it's not. They I do. No, 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 they go sorry, with cameras. They don't allow you to take your phone up to record anything. They won't see you. That's yeah. true because it's dark. And so sometimes yeah, they come in to check. Yeah. I've, I've been sure. in a situation where they come in to check. Say, uh -huh. oh, drop your phone. Uh -huh. not allowed. Mm. Yeah, those, no, those measures are, you know. But they always find a way. Of course. People always find a way. Okay. Now, now uh, you're an actress. You're a film director. And you're a producer as well. Yes. So, which of these roles do you actually think is the toughest, especially when you're in a movie? Okay. So, I feel like each and every one of these roles have a have their own challenges. You know, um, being an actor, you have to dig into your emotions. Now, what a lot of people don't see is that it's just all glamorous when it's on screen, Absolutely. but the process. Like, there are times where, as an actor, you have to dig deep into an emotion just for you to portray it well. And it might be hurting you because, for example, um, something happened on the set of the funeral when we are filming. Um, my lead actor, the female actor, you know, she, she's the person that had died and att she was attending her funeral. There was a part when we were shooting and she was so deep in her emotions, she could not control herself. She was weeping profusely. They had to take a break you know, and just help her calm down. This is because a lot of effort is put into it. And some people, in acting, you need to reach to some emotion. So imagine someone that has lost someone there, maybe their parent or a child mm. or a sibling, and you have to act that role, and then you are reminded of that hurt that you felt. It's a lot, and it's very tasking. Mm -hmm. you know? Acting is serious work. It is. Indeed. It is serious work, you know. It is serious work. And as a director, on the other hand, it feels like the whole vision of the project is on you. Yeah. However it comes out, the way it's looking, your ideas. Okay. It's a lot. Creativity is not easy. Not There's true. a lot of process with true. it. Then producing, hmm, people management. You yeah. see the production from start <laughs> to finish. True. So personally, with my own experience, I would say for me, producing has been the most challenging. Because mm -hmm. um, first of all, it is your film. You are responsible. At the end of the day, if it flops, if it's not marketable, it's on you. It's, it's on, on you. you. So, and apart from that, you have to manage people. And it is a lot of work managing people. Sometimes you just want to scream the whole world mm. down. You just want to be annoyed at them. But then you have to, at the end of the day, put yourself together, understand, you know, all of it. And then just, just make it work. So I'll take producing. Okay, so finally, before we let you go, yeah. um, we wouldn't be doing our viewers well if I don't ask this question. <laughs> I'm what, scared. <laughs> you shouldn't, <laughs> don't you shouldn't be. be scared. So you're a woman trying to make it in the movie industry. Mm. What are those challenges peculiar to your gender? Peculiar to... Okay. Um, so a lot of times I feel like people may not take you seriously, especially when it comes to people management as a woman. Some people have ego, and on set, you get to work with different ages of people, from the young ones to the old ones and sure. all of that. And sure. so there are times where you're trying to coordinate everybody and just say, okay, stop doing that. We need to, we're working with time. We need to get it rolling. Yeah. And the person is looking at you like, who are you? Stop to me. You don't have way. the capacity to exactly. take charge. Exactly. And then you guys, are, you can see me now. I'm very tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah you're not I, as tiny I, as I, you I, think I you what are. you did there. <laughs> You heard what you heard. What he no, said. Was her, by the way, yeah, I guess. So just imagine a tiny person like me, a woman, and then I'm telling you, oh, no, you have to keep it down. You're like, I'm not going to do what you're saying. What are you going to do about it? So these are some of the challenges that I have experienced, you know, personally. I'm not going to say what I haven't. You know, there are stories where you, people would have to, you know, ask for something in return. I've never experienced that, so I'm not going to talk about it. 
Okay, it's been lovely having Phoebe with yes, us in the studio. Been. I wish we could continue this conversation, but unfortunately, we have to let you go. Phoebe, mm -hmm. thank you so much thank for you, guys. you know gracing the show it's today. Been amazing. All right, we'll go on a quick break now, and when we return, we'll come back with the entertainment segment. Don't go anywhere. There really is no need for this. A funeral, or you've been here? Both. I miss her too. These people never cared about me when I was alive. I was unprepared for my sister dying. Who do they think they're fooling now that I'm dead? Why is this locked? Asha, open the door. I want to leave. You can't leave until you're graceful for your life. Do you even know whose funeral this is? The funeral service for Rita Osakwe has begun. Took you long enough. So you're welcome back and uh, you're still watching uh, Daybreak Extra right here on Trust TV if you're just joining us. And uh, you know, it's uh, some people say it's quarter to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's a good thing it because is. we're now in my favorite segment of the show. Okay, it is? Oh, I yeah, didn't of know course. that. I thought it was politics. You disrespect me too much. No, I thought it was politics. You just take me as this serious person that's just like you know, I'm not in the mood to fight with time. you or argue or quarrel time. today, all right? You, you, you do know you're that. You're fond of doing this thing, and that is my problem with you. You know what to do. When you know the right acting, thing, but you tell keep. us so that we'll... Anyways, um, we're in my favorite segment, like I said, <laughs> the entertainment segment, <laughs> and we're joined by... Dana. You shouldn't have called her name now. No, but you said... I, I look at okay, you, we're joined... I said, I said, <laughs> we're joined by... And I turned and All I right, looked at so, you. Okay, so you're welcome. <laughs> so if you could introduce yourself, because she's our co-anchor today. Yes. So, All right, thank you so much. I am Dana Daniel Zegi, and uh, I'm a broadcast journalist. Okay. So tell it's us what's nice to have you on Daybreak Extra. On. Okay, it's, uh, you know, the entertainment world is kind of a mashup of uh, sweet and sour. Mm -hmm. uh, we have just like everyday life. So we woke up this morning to the news, uh, the uh, uh, Maven CEO actually p posted on his Instagram page that he lost his mother. That's and really sad. Really sad. And he talked about how that the mom has been, his mom has been a pillar and a strong support system to whatever he was doing. And then uh, definitely that was really a hard one for him because he True. said those were the hardest words mm. uh, he had ever penned down, saying oh. he lost his mom. You know, you know, I actually 
feel for him because actually, uh, you know, uh, I know what he went through. Mm -hmm. I know his journey. I know how much his mom has actually supported him. I know how close he is to his mom. And you know, when you look like your mom like that, you will definitely. Why are you taking this sort of shit? No, but no, no. <laughs> Obviously, looking at the picture of I the mom, you would that know that uh, that's, that's a like? serious. Uh, See, wait, 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 wait. I know. Wait, wait. I actually know men. Yourself, men, men. Actually and their moms. Mm -hmm. True. Yes, so, of course. So, so and it's really I, I cannot even imagine what he's going through Definitely. at this moment. You know, uh, last week it was Adame. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What do you call this? Is it Madame Kofu? You know, yes, like three, three. We lost three. You mm -hmm. know, uh, actors, and then okay. we also. So as it was seen, a picture yeah, of Don Jazzy's mom, mom, and then that's um, like now Adame. Adame. It's just too much quite sadness, you know, in the entertainment scene sure. in a week. Too yes, much. it was. It was so. Sure. It was too so much. sad and so terrible. And, and obviously, he has already begun by telling us how it made. He's making him feel. Mm. And then looking at going back to the other story, which is Ada Ahmed's story. Mm. Also, you know, uh, Ada Ahmed has dealt with grief. It's yeah. It's like back and forth. Well. Honestly, uh, looking Cars at an interview that she granted, I think uh, and she granted an, an interview where she talked about how that uh, she had lost, I think, six or seven family members, mm. how close she dealt with members. that, close family members, oh, some were goodness. siblings, oh, and then goodness. coming to lose her daughter That's in right. 2020, mm -hmm. in yes. October, that was like uh, the, the straw that yeah. broke, the, camel, broke yeah. the camel's back, and it really got her really down and depressed and mm. she came out and said it time and time again and uh, that brings me to the question of how we deal with mental health issues in, in the Nigeria. country because she came out and said she is struggling with her mental health you know a lot of people would actually say if you talk about it you know it helps a lot but mm. does it really help because after talking about it you go what back and you're alone you and get? you think about it do you get and you know actually for, for, you know forget about it you know most men do not like you know coming out or being out there but i love how vulnerable you mm. know uh, don jazzy is yes you know he's always been uh, you know he comes off as this you know uh, mm -hmm. macho mm -hmm. man this mm -hmm. alpha male mm -hmm. but he I'm is a CEO, but He's I'm actually really quite a sweetheart mm -hmm. deep inside. And I love how vulnerable, you know, and I hope, you know, uh, the, what do you call it, the social media community, mm -hmm. you know, that's his family, his online it's, family, would actually yeah, help him, him in this time, time of, of grief. grief. And I hope we have uh, more people, more support for the, um, for celebrities like that mm. i we yeah. really wish we have more support because looking at still looking at ada ames uh, story yeah. you know she got a role even after she talked about her mental health yeah. issues she got a mm. role and she couldn't perform mm. and uh, what happened was that she came on social media to say that she was being sued yeah she said yes, so she i said. remember that so video. you could just imagine somebody going through a lot and coming out to say that that would not allow them mm. to perform how and they are supposed to perform yeah. and then someone is suing them for that yeah. so i think we have to uh, be nicer to yeah. those people they're humans indeed. looking at beyond the glamour mm. yeah. indeed we really mm. have to be Pretty nicer really to to people um because if you take a look at how ada ame was able to so excellently interpret her role mm. as um what's what's her name again in Emu. the johnson Emu. 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 she was so full of life Mm -hmm. Who would have thought mm -hmm. that she was going through sure. so much if she hadn't, you know, spoken openly about what she was going through? Perhaps nobody would have, you know, you know, you know, the funny thing that she was going through. I so actually much. agree with what he's saying, and you know, uh, in as much as you know, she's actually gone through a lot, she's lucky enough to have found a few people, friends, would actually stick by her, like mm. Empress and Jama. Yes. Because I met Adame at an event, you know, like two years ago, and you could actually tell if you're someone who had actually been through a lot, mm. you would actually see it in that in person's eyes. But, you know, she gave up this, oh, I'm okay, I'm she happy covers vibe. Up. Yeah, she covers up. You know, and when you're going through mental illness, you, you won't even know. People mm -hmm. will not mm -hmm. know. And that's most of, most of the time, you know, uh, most of these people, they're, you feel they're, they're at their happiest. Mm -hmm. But after that happiness, what happens, you know, behind the curtains? Mm -hmm. Look mm -hmm. at the case of Robin Williams, right? Same thing. Who knew he, he actually suffered oh, a mental breakdown so and he, mm -hmm. you know, committed suicide? You've had a lot of them like that. Today they are happy, tomorrow they're gone. Mm. Th that's what makes um, mental illness more, even the more dangerous because, mm -hmm. you know, you can't actually use face value to determine yeah. whether these persons are mm -hmm. facing, really you know, whatever not. it is. It's just a few of them that you see it's 
you know, show on their face and you ask, are you okay? But what about those who come into, you know, go out every day with a smiley face, mm -hmm. even help they those people who happy. might even look down yes. to get on their exactly. feet, yes. only to hear subsequently that this person was going probably committed suicide than... because mm -hmm. of, you know, such reasons. And you're and like, look at what happened. I mean, just me, hours before uh, she slumped and was declared dead, um, she posted a video of herself. Obviously, well, who, would have, thought, yes, who would have thought that she was still uh, going, going through, through something or she had something possibly mm. underlying, an ailment or something like that. She looked all, uh, all fine and all uh, happy at that mm. moment. And yeah. she looked like, okay, I'm keeping the whole, the whole stress down and I want to come out and be happy again. Sure. Well, uh, may their souls rest in Amen. perfect peace. Amen. That's Amen. Really all we can actually pray for right now. Let's move on to the next. All right, uh, moving on to Idris Abdul Karim. He is a rapper, a Nigerian rapper, yeah. mm. uh, who has also been battling with his health. Mm. So, talking about Idris Abdul Karim now. Uh, there is this GoFundMe project okay. that uh, is ongoing for him to en ensure that uh, well-meaning Nigerians are able to uh, to, to donate fund funds for his, kidney, uh, for his transplant. Yeah, kidney transplant. And I think it's coming up uh, in days from today. Okay. Uh, I think uh, MI, when MI posted on his uh, Instagram uh, page, uh, he said that uh, it was going to be on the 27th and they already had a donor from his family mm. that was willing to give out the kidney. Okay. And, but then recently he also came down to just calm and, and ease the tension that is to say that he was actually not as bad as, but then it's bad, it, but then... It is, a transplant. Yeah, a transplant. Definitely. It's bad, but then he's kind of giving people that uh, hope that he will be better and yes. he's actually okay. That's now. so true, Dana, uh, because earlier, I, saw, mm -hmm. I saw a video. Yeah, yes, a video. The, the video he posted, posted yesterday by yeah. the beach, right? Yes, that's Where it. he was, but then from, he has lost a lot of weight, one. Obviously. Secondly, there was really no excitement in his voice mm, of course mm. and also he couldn't even walk well so it was mm. it was so emotional for me i think i think this I, is this is the time because they say prayer solves a lot yeah. of mm. things yes. so we need to you know pray for him and you know for him to actually recover mm. quickly because look at sound sultan i just actually you know thought about mm. it and you know uh, yeah exactly so yes. we, we actually need to pray about it because it's one thing only god knows what he's going through sure. and i want to actually ask mm. Is it possible that, because you have a lot of actors and musicians, when they, you know, get to a certain age in their lives, they start, you know, developing one form of ailment or the other. Mm -hmm. Could it be the lives they actually lived yeah, yeah, while they were a lot of, younger? Of okay, a you know, lifestyle. Um, I, I would years. not want to go with the lose kind of lifestyle, possibly. But then I think uh, I read in an article somewhere that uh, Africans are more prone to kidney failures mm -hmm. than uh, mm -hmm. other races. Is that so research, by, is that research by, by Africans? Uh, no, I don't. I can't really remember. Because but yeah, I think I wrote it that's, somewhere. That's I, really I'm not an authority point. in that. That's not a question. That's a really valid point. Thank you. Thank you. I just asked the question, please. By Af African. Uh, actually, uh, I just, but, but then it says uh, we're prone to, but then our lifestyle, mm. the kind of lives we live kind of make us even more susceptible, uh, susceptible okay, to okay. such uh, ailments, okay. especially talking about kidney failures mm. now. Because uh, it's rampant, talks, it's it rampant is. and that's uh, what uh, we're talking about right now. And as it relates to uh, the rapper Idris Abdul Karim, so I think I don't know if that is true. I think we'll do a research and hmm. check out the facts uh, more what, so that we come and talk about is it, it. When I think of all these things, I just feel really emotional because, Dashin, if you look at it, we're you beginning emotional? to love. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You see, all of these artists that we grew up listening to, we're beginning to lose them, and it's like mm -hmm. we're losing them. Mm -hmm. at the okay, tip of okay. our fingers and there's nothing we, will we can not do lose them there's like nothing that we can again. do like i feel so so we actually bad. have a few more minutes so can we just okay take um one more? Uh, okay now uh, to a lighter more uh, exciting yes, story please, now okay. because it's been sad sad mm -hmm. from the beginning yes. to now so let's talk about uh, the comeback of p square peter and paul mm. Mm. Lovely, so. lovely comeback. Why was they going away in the first place? Okay, in the mm. first place, like, there were <laughs> lots of stories, <laughs> lots of stories <laughs> everywhere <laughs> about the go <laughs> away or the breakup. I love, and, um, I love that. You know comeback. how Nigerians have been praying mm. that uh, they would have them back together mm. because uh, that was like that. That's like a powerful combo. Mm. Prayer, like, prayers answer it all things. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> so you feel the prayers have been answered yes with the comeback has. so they've made my a comeback with answered. two singles uh, which we have jaye and we have a uh, find someone mm -hmm. and the jaye if, if you look at responses people react people's reactions mm. on social media the jaye is like uh, an anthem it's like a bomb. I have like not heard it. I doubt it. Look, see, uh, okay, find someone you know, you know is going to be the It's already the playing in my head right now. Thing, the funny you, thing too, is, you know, I actually love, you know, the fact that they're back together, not just for their music, but as brothers, not just as brothers, as twins. twins you know, as twins, twins yeah. actually find a way to, you know, get back together. Dashan would know. Dashan would know because No, they find a way to actually settle their differences. But it took too long. I've never seen twins this, you know. Yes, I've never seen it. It's, it's, and do you know the question that this brings to my mind? I hope the issues that broke them up have been settled. I hope we don't see anything like that come up. Mm. Because it had to do with their career. Yeah. Whatever broke them apart uh, made the career, their career suffer. Mm. And we hope that we don't see that again. Hopefully. 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 How long Hopefully does it take you, and, Please you and your me. twin brother to settle your differences? Oh, really? We don't. She, of course, she has we don't really that's, that's why she's speaking like so passionately oh, yeah, about yeah. it. We don't really fight like that. So, but, you know, it's all we're, we're mature now. Back then, we actually used to Go give ourselves it. blows and but all it's, that. It's, but it's really but a right good now, thing that you're we're back older. together. Sure, it's a good thing. It's a it good is. Thing. It's fantastic. For everyone. Mm -hmm. All right. So, with that, we have come to the end of the show. Thank you so much, Dana Daniel Zeggy, for joining us on the entertainment segment. Today. Thank you so much, Dana. We hope to have you again. Thank you. All right. With this, thank you so much of viewers for tuning in it was an awesome time you know uh being here on the show we'll be back again next week saturday same time 8 a.m same station trust tv i remain dash and Husseina usman and i am sagir ibrahim thank me for making the program a lively one see you next week